from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Tonight, we present Mildred Cram's exciting romance, Cinera, starring Mr. Joseph Cotton. This is your host, Don Wilson. An unforgettable and inspiring story of the regeneration of a lonely man and a beautiful woman who have tried and failed to find release from the past in the dangerous, steaming jungles of West Africa. Our story is Cinera, one of Mildred Cram's most famous romances, and our star, Mr. Joseph Cotton. I cried for madder music and for stronger wine. But when the feast is finished and the lamps expire, then falls thy shadow, Sinera, and the night is thine. And I am desolate and sick of an old passion, yea, hungry for the lips of my desire. I have been faithful to thee, Sinera, in my fashion. Someone has said that having been once an English gentleman, one remains always an English gentleman. If this be true, then you must still accept me as such. You must accept a man who was poisoned by a dream, and who in his pain and weakness ran until he had neither the means nor will to run farther, who dropped then and began to sink. A man to whom England and the dream became at last dim memories, blurred by the smothering reality of the present, the stinking Kiri jungle, the boiling sun of Africa, and the river. As slow and sluggish as time itself, its waters rolling on endlessly, unheeding and uncaring. A man with only one last hope, death and peace. But time, like the river, has a way of eddying back upon itself and returning upon occasion, things lost in the past. And time, it is said, rules all creatures, even an English gentleman. Juan! Uh, what now? Juan! Save your breath, you confounded idiot. Juan! Juan! What's the matter? What do you want? Well, fella, talk it, Juan. Me bring him. Talk it. A letter? For me? Fella belong to Lady Post. Him say, bring him chop chop. Here, give it to me. A letter. Huh. 800 miles up the Kiri River, five miles from the last trading post. A letter. Good Lord. From Margaret. My dearest Hedder, I shall say this simply and leave the rest to you. I was wrong and I was a fool. I love you. The other didn't matter. No other could ever matter. I am still waiting for you still want to marry you, now and forever, your own... Margaret, finally, after so long, and... <laughs> now it's very funny. <laughs> I was wrong. I love you. What a joke. Twan, <laughs> you fellow mark and paper, me take them all the same... Get chapter. out, get out, go on. Twan, no hit him, fellow boy. Why did you have to find me? Why couldn't you have lost it? Go on, get out! No hit him, Twan, he better go. Waiting for you. Dearest Hedda, now and forever. Hedda! Waiting to marry you. Hedda! Who was that? Hedda, who was out there? Where's my shaving mirror? There, by the basin. Who was it, Hedda? One of the river boys. What'd he want? 
All right, don't answer. Stand there admiring yourself. Maybe you like this dirty jungle and the heat and the flies. Peace, you said. Back here in the jungle, I'd find peace. And I believed you. Talk about being a fool. I believed oh, you. Oh, shut up, Laura. I suppose you thought I'd believe anything. Go anywhere just to get away from that place. Run away together. Away from the world. Away from everything. You said. Well, I've changed my mind, Hedda. I'd go back to Port Michael tomorrow if I knew how to get there. Yes, and back to being what I was. Hedda, do you hear me? I'd go back I said there. shut up. But I can't go back, and you know it. You've got me here, body and soul. So? <laughs> how long has it been since you've looked at yourself in a mirror? Here. Look. Leave me alone. What do you expect in a place like this? Look at yourself if you want to see something pretty. I have looked. Laura. The boy brought me a letter. Somehow I'd got to the trading post. The Nan sent it on up. From a woman, wasn't it? Heather, was it from a woman? Yes. The one you told me about? I must have been drunk. I don't get hurt. Easily anymore. It didn't matter. I didn't mean to hurt you. I said it didn't matter. All right, sorry. That bottle's empty, if that's what you're looking for. It's been empty for a week. Well, you didn't have to drink it all, did you? I don't know who drank it. Maybe I did, maybe you did. Anyway, it's gone. What's the difference? That letter. What did she say, Hedda? <laughs> She, she's changed her mind. She's still waiting for me. If I go to her, she'll marry me. I see. It's strange. For a second, I didn't even recognize her name. Heather. Then it all... It all came back, all the pain, the desire. What are you going to do? London in the rain. Lilacs for sale. The crowds at night. Bright lights. Theaters and restaurants and spring in Sussex with the morning sun. Heather, listen to me. What are you going to do? You're going to leave me? You're going away and leave me here? Is that it? Let go, Laura. You said we were coming here to die. I know that. All right. I wanted to die. But not this way. Not alone. Let go of me. I couldn't stand it alone. You can't do it, Heather. You can't go off and leave no, me let's here. Now, let go. Why didn't you leave me, poor Michael? Why did you mess with my life? Do you think I'm just nothing? You can't pick somebody up and then throw them down and leave them there when you're through with them? Laura. Please, please, Heather. Please get me out of here. Suppose you tell me how, Laura. We can walk, can't we? Walk? It took 100 bearers 63 days to bring us here from the coast and they carried you every step of the way. Walk, you say? I could try. You can't leave me here. Oh. You just can't. Stop whimpering. I don't intend to leave you. We're both going to stay here. But don't I... worry. It's not because of you. If you were the only reason, I'd go in a minute. I don't understand you. When you lost her... You wanted to die. And now when she asked you to come back, you want no part of it. Come back? Like this? Offer a woman like her the thing I've become, the thing I am now? You could change. Two years ago, yes. Even a year ago, not now. No. We're staying here, both of us. We'll die if we do. No doubt. Fernand won't give us any more supplies from the post. There's no more ammunition for the rifle. We can't live on just fish. Hedda, let's get away from here. I want to go back. Back? To what? What, Michael, the sailors, and the stevedores? I, I'd be different this time. 
find a new life. This time, I'd fight. Fight how? I don't know how, but I would. I know I would. Please, Heather, we could try at least. Suppose we did get through somehow. Come slinking out on the coast like a pair of animals. Then what, Laura? You could walk into Clara's place and Port Michael and say, Here I am, boys, I'm back. No, I And I could go on to London and say, Well, I'm here for the wedding. Look me over. (laughs) I have been faithful to thee, Cinera, in my fashion. Cinera? Is that her name? The name in a poem. I like it. You like it, you stupid little fool. You detest me, don't you? Yes, but I detest myself even more. All right, Laura. We'll have a go at it. Heather. Uh, Fernand might give us a few supplies for the trading post. Cartridge is a canoe. We'll be glad enough to get rid of it. We'll make it through. I know we will. There's not a chance. We'll die in the jungle. Die fighting it, trying for one more mile, tearing our hearts out. Today, Heather. Let's go now. All for what? For the Port Michael waterfront and a dead dream in London. Can't you see it, Laura? That's what makes the whole thing so amusing. That's why it's worth a try. Just one great big pointless joke. (laughs) We'll leave tomorrow. It was mid-morning when we pushed through the fringe of the jungle and came to the trading post. I had a few tins of food in my knapsack and an empty rifle. With 800 miles of hostile bush ahead, it all depended on Fernan. He'll help us, Heather. I know he'll help us. I feel good this morning. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, those ridiculous slippers of yours aren't going to be all right. They won't last another mile. They're all I had. I can't walk barefoot. Well, you but... can't walk in those either. Maybe Fernan will have some boots he'll give us. <laughs> My sight. Haven't you ever noticed? I have quite pretty feet. Lots of people have told me so. No doubt. That's odd. There's no one around the clearing. I don't think there's anyone here. Heather, it looks deserted. Come on. Empty. Cleaned out. Not a tin left on the shelves. Not a bolt of cloth. Not a cartridge. A clean sweep. The Navy. Well, there's no sign of any attack. I'll tell you what happened, Laura. Fernan pulled out, left without a word. The natives came in and cleaned it out afterwards. He left us back there in the bush to die. But why? Why would he do such a thing? Why not? What would matter to him? I had no money left. He knew that. Why bother about a pair of bush tramps? No one could be that hard and <laughs> cruel. Well, well, we, we made five miles of the trip anyway. That's all we're going to make. Beaten. Beaten before we've even started. Didn't I tell you, Laura, what a joke it was? The natives. You've forgotten the natives. No, I haven't. As soon as they realize Fernand is gone for good with his guns and his police boys, they'll start remembering us. They'll be around, Laura. But if they came here, cleaned out what Fernand left, they'll have cartridges and supplies and the village is less than a mile away. We could go there and... And what, threaten them with an empty rifle? It wouldn't be any worse than waiting for them to come here, Heather. You could bargain with them. They respect you. What did you say? They respect you, Heather. All right. We'll have a try at it. They didn't see us at first as we walked toward them. They were too busy celebrating, trying on the cast-off pajamas, straw hats, strips of calico, finishing off the last of the tin food stolen from the trading post. A canoe and a few cartridges were the best I could hope for. The food was gone. Finally, one of the natives crossed. We called to the others, and gradually the compound fell silent. They don't look friendly. If they jump me, run for it. You might get away. (laughs) Where to? Don't let on you're scared. I'm not scared. Hmm. 
You fellow, what do you want? Me fellow make him talk, talk number one, boy. You bring him fellow chief. Me fellow chief. No good, you fellow. Walk him long, trading post. Take them all, same belong to me. No belong you. All same belong all me fellow. Bonda! You know I'm the Vigo. He says the stuff belongs to them now. No, but there must be some way. You, fellow chief boy, you make him listen. By and by, man belong to trading post. Walk him here. Bring him all a fellow police boy. Bring them all together. Musket. Pass them all as fellow boy. Lock him up. You catch him talk. Me catch him talk. You talk gamma. Oh, say, make afraid. Man belong to lady pose, walk him far, far long river. No walkie here, no more time. No, no, man, they got He knows the man has pulled out. He knows he's got us. You uh, tell him uh, what name this got. Your wristwatch, Heather. Oh, they call him Tick Tick. All same, make him talk. You listen. <laughs> you fellow chief boy, you want him? What you give him, uh, this, uh, tick tick? What do you fellow want? Want him, uh, liquid paddle boat, go water. Want him all together, bang, bang, belong musket. Can do? Can do. Give him the tick tick. Here. You catch him, bang, bang. Catch him, paddle boat, alongside river. You fellow walk him, chop, chop. Come on, Lara, before this novel he wears off and he changes his mind. You were wonderful, Heather. I, I was scared. You were scared. Death. What do you think I was? You didn't show it. You were wonderful. Here, into the boat. <laughs> Up front. Quickly, before the thing of stopping us. All right. We made it. We only made a start. It's a long way yet to the sea. If this river even reaches the sea. We'll get there. Wonderful. Uh, oh, you're wrong, Laura. I was lucky, that's all. Hour after hour, we coasted down the silent river with the green walls of the jungle at either side, sometimes closing in as if to block our passage, sometimes widening around a long stretch of lagoon. Brilliant tropic birds flash streaks of gaudy color in the sunlight and shadow around us. And furry bands of monkeys howled and chattered from the foliage along the banks. We saw no signs of human life. But all through the day, from near at times or far away, we could hear the drums. Night came and we pushed on. Laura sleeping fitfully in the bow, while I did little more than keep the boat toward the middle of the channels, letting it drift with the current. Finally dawn in the long hours of another steaming day, and still we pushed on trying to escape the drums, not knowing their meaning, but fearing them. Late in the afternoon, the channel narrowed to a tortuous path rushing between the choking jungle growth that laced together overhead to form a green canopy stretching from bank to bank. Now the drums were very close. Heather, those drums, they must mean something. Signaling. That's why I didn't want to camp last night. Step one foot ashore and anything could happen. But we'll have to sometime. Maybe tonight. Looks as though there's a lake or lagoon ahead of us. It'll be dark in a little while. There might be an island or a point where we can slip ashore. It's these narrow stretches that are... What is it? Natives. Both banks, the jungle swarming with them. Laura, get down. Arrows. They're shooting from the trees. No use fighting back. There are dozens of them, hundreds maybe. Laura, can you swim? No. What are you going to do? Tip the canoe over. I'll stand up in front and pretend I'm wounded. Heather, Be no. quiet, quiet, listen. Hang on to that cross brace in front of you. When the canoe goes over, you'll be under. Stay under it and hang on to the brace. But I'll drown, Heather. Plenty of air trapped under the canoe, understand? Yes. One more thing. If they get me when I stand up, stay under the canoe and try to work it ashore to the other side of the lagoon. You might pull through. All right, now grab that brace. I'm going to stand up. Be careful, Heather. Good luck. Ah! Oh, 
Ted. Easy, easy now. Ted, what is it? What happened? You fainted in the water. I got you ashore here. But it's night. The stars are out. You've been asleep. Feel better? Except I'm hungry. Well, I'll look for some food as soon as it's daylight. We lost the rifle and all the supplies. And we, uh... We lost the boat, too, Lara. Heather. Getting ashore, I, I, I couldn't hang on to it. The current got it. Because of me? Forget it. We knew we'd never make it anyway. Already we've come farther than I expected we could. Are you afraid to expect things? Not afraid. I don't want to expect anything. Thank you for my life, Heather. Why did you do it? I was no good to you, but the boat was. You could have let me go and kept the boat. Stop talking like a fool. Do you hear voices? Voices? It's a river. Jungle sounds. It sounded like voices. Millions of voices. I'll try to sleep now. Good night, Hedder. And I sat there and listened to the jungle and the night and the river. And for the first time since the letter came, I felt the desire to live coming alive again within me. Laura lay a few feet from me, her face touched by the moonlight, her hair still damp from the river, sleeping like a child. I felt pity for her. And responsibility. I'd brought her this far, and somehow I'd get her to the coast. It was a matter of pride, I felt. And perhaps I could go back to Margaret again and go back once more as a man. <laughs> I don't know how long I slept, but I woke in that hushed moment just before dawn. A vast stillness lay over the jungle, and even the river seemed silent and waiting. And with the stillness came a feeling of anxiety, strange and unaccountable. Then seconds later, I knew the reason for it. I was alone on the bank of the river. Laura was gone. Moments passed while I struggled to come fully awake, to shake myself free of the dreaming. And when I realized the truth that she had gone, disappeared in the night, but at the first instant I had accepted my responsibility for it, but made of it a base on which to build anew my pride and honor. I'd failed and lost her. I felt somehow that losing her meant losing Margaret, too. I found her footprints, those silly tour slippers followed them where she'd pushed through the undergrowth. I came up on a fresh trail, hacked through the jungle, where the safari had passed within days or hours. And along the trail, a quarter mile down the river, I finally found Laura. She was sitting in a camp chair, holding a rifle across her knees. Near her lay the body of a man. You came. Oh, I'm glad, Heather. I didn't know what to do. Did you kill him? No. Fernand, isn't it? Yes. He was lying there like that when I stumbled onto them last night. Them? Natives. Dozens of them. I recognize some of Fernand's servants. His police boys, as he called them. They were going through these bundles by torchlight, tearing them open. Mutiny. When they saw me come out of the jungle, they dropped the guns, everything. I suppose it was a pretty frightening sight. My clothes torn to ribbons, my hair streaming. They took you for a ghost. They just disappeared in the bush. I stayed here the rest of the night. But they haven't come back. All night? Here alone? You must have been terrified. I was. Laura, you're, you're a brave girl. <laughs> I was lucky. That's all. All his equipment, supplies. They've hardly been touched. Rifles, 
Food, clothing, shoes, even a portable canoe. Laura, you know what this means? We've got a chance again. You sound as though you're glad. I am. I'm... I'm starting to want to live. I'll get you through to the coast. Here, look. Finance clothes, a linen suit, it'll... It'll be too big for you, but it's better than what you've got. And canvas shoes, maybe... If you lace them tight, there'll be some help here. Get into them. All right. I'll be a moment. And be quick about it. Daylight now. Those boys will get their nerve up and come back to finish the job. I'm hurrying. I'll only be a minute. I'll get the canoe loaded with food, ammunition. We can drag it through the bush to the river. We'll eat after we get out in the channel. What about Fernand? Did his own men kill him? Probably. The ones he always said he understood so well. He understands them now, at least. It'd be awful to die like that. Alone, people that hate you. I feel sorry for him. He didn't feel sorry for us. How are you coming along? I'm almost dressed. <laughs> you were right, Heather. It is too big. Laura, why did you leave last night? Wait for me to go to sleep, then run away. Laura? I heard you. Then why don't you answer? Forget it, Heather. What's the difference? It worked out all right. We got this out of it. I'm ready now. All right, let's go. Late that night, far down the river, we took a chance and made camp on a clear point at the bend in the river. We opened tins of food, ate ourselves sick, talked and laughed, and for a moment at least, the past lifted from us. The four years of pain I tried to bury in port after port around the world, everyone the same, all like Port Michael, where it picked up Laura, lost and beaten, and in her own way, running too. Did you ever dream, Heather? When you were little, I mean. About how it was going to be when you grew up. I dare say I did. I suppose everyone does. What did you dream? I don't believe I remember the... The usual, I suppose, I'd do something other very remarkable and become famous for it. I remember mine. It was always the same dream. I was always a great lady. Very beautiful, of course. Everyone loved me and served me and respected me. I don't understand it, Heather. How could I end up in... Port Michael, with a dream like that. Forget Port Michael. I had a dream, too. And I ended up as a tramp in the bush. But that's past. Past for both of us. It's strange. Why don't people ever dream of just being happy? If they did, things might work out better for them. Maybe. Tell me about that poem, Heather. Sinner... Wasn't that her name? Well, most of it I've forgotten, except the last line. I have been faithful to the Cinera in my fashion. Do all men love like that? Only in a fashion? In a way, I suppose. Each in his own fashion. Something of the sort. I don't, I don't think that's exactly what it means, though. It means uh, more that... Well, that they... That what? I... I can't seem to put it into words. It, it expresses a feeling, a, a mood, a sort of gentle irony. A dedication, perhaps. And a promise, certainly that. But I, oh, I'm not a poet, Laura. You never loved me at all, did you, Hedda? Not any time. Right from the beginning. I thought a lot of you, Laura. I still do. I knew it, really. I just didn't think about it. It was always her, never me. The girl you ran away from. The one you're going back to now. I was just available, that's all. Laura, it's like some of the Chinese in Port Michael who smoke opium to sleep and forget. That's what I was to you. A sort of opium. Nothing else. There were times I cursed you, told you I hated you. Detested you. I'm sorry for those times.
I only hated and detested myself. Can you understand? Perhaps. But it doesn't matter. How could you love anyone you couldn't respect? And I had no respect, you, me. I followed you without even questioning. Respect. That's what I have to find again. A respect for myself, inside. You'll find it. You are finding it now. I guess both of us are changing. Maybe before long we could look in a mirror again. <laughs> you could. When I pulled you out of the water and you slept in the moonlight, I watched your face. It was changed. Washed, fresh and clean, like a child's face. The moonlight plays tricks, Hedda. Why did you run away while I was asleep? Because... Because you'd saved me and lost the boat. And I saw how things were. Alone, you'd have a chance. I was only a hindrance. My reasons for wanting to get out were only selfish ones, but... You had her waiting for you. And a new life waiting. Laura, no. I thought maybe... God would be just as pleased if I died back there. Without doing even worse things than I've already done. So... I... Ran away. That's all. Don't ever do a thing like that again, do you hear me? Don't ever do it. But it matter? Of course it matters. I've promised myself I'll get you out of this and get us both out. But you'll have to help. You've got to keep up your nerve and fight. I will. I am. In my own fashion, Heather. Oh. It's going to be a fight for both of us. But remember one thing. We're in this together until we reach the coast. Yes. Until we reach the coast. Will you help me? Well, I guess that's the least I can do, isn't it? Help you keep your pride and your promise and be faithful in your fashion. Yes, I'll help you, Hedda. Days later, we broke from the sweet decay of the jungle and moved into the broad reach of water that swept on to the plains and lowlands beyond. We were more than halfway to the coast. The worst lay behind us. But then, without warning, the smooth channel broke into a raging torrent that carried us against the sharp black rocks and foaming whirlpools of a long stretch of deadly rapids. Minutes later, our canoe was gone, smashed, and we were struggling in the ugly water. How we got to shore alive, I, I don't know, but we did. And once again, we were on foot and still... 300 miles from the coast. I can't, Heather. I can't walk any farther. You've got to. We're out of the jungle now, below the rapids. I'm sure the river steamer comes up this far. There's bound to be a settlement around the next bend. The next bend. Always the next bend. All there be is more rain and more mud. I can't go on. You've got to. We've come this far. We can't give up now. It's easier for you. You've got a reason. So have you. you. Said you wanted a chance. Wait a second. What is it? Thought I heard something. There. Laura, it is. It's a dog. All right. It's a dog. What of it? It means there are people somewhere about. People? A settlement, perhaps, or a native village. They keep dogs, too. But then... No, no, it'll be all right. They're not bush natives. They'll probably be friendly. Hello! People. We ran away from people. Now we're back. It's different. We were beaten then. We hadn't learned to fight, but it's different now. Hello! There, through the trees. Someone's coming. Here we are. Over here. It's not a native. There is a post. We can get food, supplies. Maybe there'll be a steamer to the coast. Laura, we've, we've won again. Yes. We've won again. Ah, I saw your canoe smashed buried past the post. Knew it meant trouble. I come looking for you. Are you all right? Tired. Hungry all the wise, all right. You're English, aren't you? All ah, right. Run the post for a French company. It's the last port of call for the river steamer. The name is Pelgrim. I'm Hedda. Your wife? No, no, this is... Miss Jones. Pleased to meet you. Ah, a rotten spot for a woman to be in. We're trying to get to the coast. Yes, of course. Well, there's no point standing here in the rain. Come along. 
I'll put you up, naturally. Three rooms in my bungalow. Nothing fancy, but comfortable. Day clothes, some trade stuff for the lady. Kimonos, ropes, slippers. It's very kind. I'll pay you back somehow. Oh, forget it. We'll work it out later. Be good to have some company for a change. I've been alone too long. <laughs> Pretty woman, especially. It's been a long time since I've seen a woman, miss. What a shame. You must get very lonely. Oh, yes, quite often. I'll give you my note for our food and supplies. I have no cash, though, until I get back to England. Now, don't worry about it, Mr. Hatter. Things will work out. Laura spent an hour in the room Pelgrim had given her, busy with combs and brushes, sewing and pinning a Chinese robe to fit her, trying on sandals. And when she finally came out, she was breathtaking. Lovely. There was no sign of the querulous shrew, the jungle drab. Gone to the waterfront girl of Port Michael, blatant and tawdry. Laura had become a beautiful woman, poised and aloof. Pelgrim reacted with indrawn breath. Then he laughed, smoothed his red beard, and insisted on drinks to celebrate our miraculous survival. And nothing but the best, Mr. Hedder. And I dare say you know it. You've got the look of a man who's drunk good scotch in better time. A bit, yes. Yeah. So just a small one, please. I'm fresh from the jungle, you know. <laughs> well, somewhat cozier here, wouldn't you say? Oh, very much so. Uh, you, miss? Only a little one. Just to celebrate. Remarkable how a pretty girl can change a man's outlook. It changed the whole looks of a place. Well, to the queen and uh, to a very pleasant relationship among ourselves. Queen. Queen. <clears throat> Doesn't it ever stop raining here? Oh, it's the season for it, my dear. Keeps one pretty well confined to quarters, so to speak. Not what I'd call a hardship, though. Not now. It's depressing. I don't like it. Well, fancy that now. Fresh out of the bush and a little rain bothers you. That was different. Yes, I dare say it was. A bit of good fortune, Mr. Hedder. Having her company all to yourself for so long. Yes, it was. Yeah, no wonder you went into the rapids to pull her out. I'd be a shame for a little thing like this to get away. <laughs> The rains held, and we were caged in the bungalow, the three of us, and the tension grew. Pelgrim became more annoying, more outspoken in his remarks to Laura, and she, on her part, did little to check them, seemed not even to notice she played cards with him, laughed sometimes at his stories, but mostly sat silent and aloof, lost in her own thoughts. I stayed by her, protecting her, hoping to avoid an open break before the steamer came. Even so, there were incidents... I don't understand you quite, Mr. Hedder. In what way? Well, she's told me a bit of the story, you know. It appears you have no claim, and probably not much interest, and yet you insist on making a confounded nuisance of yourself. I'm responsible for I think it's you who's being a nuisance. Odd, she don't tell me so herself. Yeah, she assumes I'll do the telling. You don't understand her. Oh, I understand her right enough. Might be I understand her better than you do, Mr. Hedder. Think that one over for a while. Well, what is it you expect me to do, Hedder? Stay locked in my room all the time? Of course not. I know what I'm doing. It doesn't look that way. Hedder, you're not jealous, are you? Jealous? Is that the only way you can see it? Why would I be jealous? I don't know, Hedder. Why would you? One night I woke from a doze. Laura had been in bed for hours and Pelgrim had been sitting up drinking alone. I turned over in my cot and so I'm fumbling with the latch on Laura's door. I reached quickly under my pillow and slid off the cot and walked quietly across the room. Pelgrim! Uh, Maybe you'd better go to bed. You were asleep, Eddie. I'm not asleep now. No, you're not. You're taking a good deal upon yourself. I'll take more if you don't get away from that door. I'm armed, Pelgrim. A knife. Uh, well, now. Finally, it's come to open hostilities. If you want it that way. A jungle tramp, depending on my charity. A man I could throw out of here to start. Have you thought of that? I've thought of it. Do as you like, but when I go, Laura goes too. Oh, does she now? 
Maybe you ought to ask her, Mr. Henry. Get away from that door. It's my door, Henry. Along with everything else here. I don't think you'll use that knife when it comes right down to it. I think you'll turn tail and run with... with the, the steamer. Oh, that fool. He knows better than to come in at night. He'll miss the landing for sure. Land... Laura. Laura, it's the steamer. I know. I heard. I heard all of it. Well, that's that, Hedda. It's over. You'll be able to leave now. Only if the captain will take us on faith. I've no money, you remember. Us? Why, yes. Hedda, I guess I'd better tell you. Pelgrim wants me to stay here. Pelgrim? Why are you so concerned? You're leaving me in Port Michael anyway. I'd be as well off here as there. Back there in the jungle, you said you'd fight. You said it was going to be different. I'm not ready to face Port Michael yet. I need time. It's not fighting if you stay here. In my own fashion, it is. It's better you go alone. You have someone waiting for you. I don't... Oh, stop being a fool. We started for the coast together, and we're going there together. Then what? Anywhere you want. It doesn't have to be Port Michael. I'll, I'll take you anywhere, anywhere else. Work our passage to England, if you like. Why, Hedder? What does it matter to you? I don't know why, not entirely at least. Partly because we started from nothing, fought through together. Because I can't stand to see you quit, give up. When we're right on the point of winning, well, you've got to come with me and see it through. You've got to win too, Laura. Say you will. Promise me. <laughs> Station identification. Good evening. <clears throat> Captain Kimberly, Mr. Hedder. At your service, ma'am. How do you do? How do you do? Captain. We're hoping, of course, that you'll be kind enough to trust us for passage out to the coast. I have credits in England. Just Mr. Hedder, Captain. As I told you, the girl is staying here. It's up to her, Pelgrim. She's no fool. Granted, it's been a bit crowded here for three, but it'll be nice and cozy for two. Laura, please. Yeah. Speak up, Laura. Tell him how he stands. Captain Kimberly, we would both be very grateful if you could see your way clear to take us. The ancient throbbing engines of the steamer aided by the current pushed the long miles of the river behind us and the coast came nearer and nearer. The rains passed and we spent the days lying under the sun awnings and many of the nights on the open pilot deck beneath the stars. Now that we'd come close to the end of our journey, Laura fell into long silences and when she spoke her words were often strange. Can you smell the flowers on the bank? Those big red ones, I think. They grow on vines. Yes, Florabunda or some such name. Must be a lot of them along here. I like to smell flowers at night when you can't see them. There'll be flowers in England this time of year. I suppose. I'd like to go back to England again sometime. Then come with me now. I can arrange passage somehow. No, Hedda, not now. Why not? You don't have to stay in Port Michael, you know. I'm not going to Port Michael. You... Captain Kimberly has a house in Bangkok at the mouth of the river. He needs someone to take care of her while he's away. A housekeeper. Can you imagine me as a housekeeper, Heather? I can imagine you as anything you want to be. That's strange. I can't. Heather, that poet, the one who wrote about Cinera... He was an Englishman, wasn't he? Why, well, boy, I guess he was, yeah. I believe so. I thought he was. Then, too, as the coast neared, my thoughts turned more and more to the letter that had reached me across the miles of sea and jungle. Lifted up from despair and degradation, was even now drawing me home to England once again. And to the dear remembered voice behind the letter. 
I was wrong and I was a fool. I love you. The other didn't matter. No other could ever matter. I am still waiting for you. Still want to marry you. Now and forever. Your own... Margaret. The one reason I'd learned to hope again, to desire, to live. Then one morning, we tied up at Bangkok for a, a three-hour layover before heading on up the coast to Port Michael. I went with Laura to Captain Kimberley's home. It's such a lovely garden. He's a very kind man, the captain. You certain this is what you want? You'll not go to England, Laura? No, Hedda. Someday, perhaps. But I couldn't face England now. Small thing to face, Laura, after what we have faced. No, you don't understand. This is where I want to be. For now, at least. I must work things out inside myself. You'll be happy, Laura? I don't know. Perhaps even that sometimes. Oh, look. Lilacs. Scrawny ones. Well, they need water. The whole garden does. I think I'm going to be quite a busy housekeeper. Child's play for a woman who's with the jungle. We did, didn't we? We whipped a lot of things together. There seemed to be a kind of strength that went from one of us to the other, just when we needed it most. I hope I'll be able to find that strength alone. You will. I know you will. You see, it's different with you, Heather. You're going to something. I'm only going away from something. Oh, Laura... What is her name? You never told me, you know. Margaret. It's a nice name. Laura, I can't leave you here alone like this. I'm not afraid. In Port Michael, I'd be afraid, but not here. Don't pity me, Hedda. It's not pity. It's more than pity. There's someone waiting for you. I know. Yes, I know. Please. Don't say any more. Just do one thing, if you will. Don't laugh when I ask you. What is it, Laura? Kiss me. Laura. Goodbye, Heather. Go now. Please. A day later, in Port Michael, I found letters held for me credit drafts, good at the local bank, renewed security, and a foothold in the world I was heading for. I caught Captain Kimberley on board the steamer just before he headed back to Bangkok and paid him our fares. Yes, I knew the drafts and credits were waiting here for you, Mr. Hedder. You scats around in the river country and the ports. But you said nothing about it. You were even getting ready to sail without asking once for payment. You'd given me your word. And as I told you, I fancy myself as rather a good judge of men. Of women, too, for that matter. That girl knew you had money waiting here for you. How could she know? I told her while we were still on the river. Told her, but not me? Why? Well, you might say I'm an eccentric in the matter of certain reticences. She knew, and yet she still sent you away. Worth thinking about, if you ask me. Worth studying over a bit. Finally, almost four years to a day from the time I'd left it, London once again. And all the old remembered sights and sounds, strange at first, and his memory caught up to the present in a surging rush, well known once more and loved. I'd crawled away once like a dog, come back now as a man, back home again to London. Then the same familiar drawing room I'd known so well, the same thick rugs, the bell clock on the mantel, the tapestries and draperies, and the same sharp pounding in my breast as I waited. Margaret. Heather, Heather, my dear. When the girl told me you were here, I could hardly believe it. Uh, It's been a long time, Margaret. A very long time. What happened to you, Heather? Where on earth have you been? Nearly everywhere a man can go, I guess, in many places one shouldn't. You haven't changed. Unless perhaps you're more beautiful. And your voice... I think that's why I came. Because I could still hear your voice. I don't understand what you mean. Your letter, Margaret. 
My letter? It reached me when I'd gone about as far as a man could go. It held me. It's brought me back. Hedda, when did you get it? Nearly a month ago. I came as quickly as I could. My dear. It gave me hope and a reason to live again. Hedda, I wrote that letter nearly two years ago. What? I supposed, of course, that you'd received it. And when months went by and you didn't answer and I grew more lonely and I could see the empty years ahead, I'm only home here on a visit, you know. What? Well, what is it you're trying to say? I'm married, Hedda. Nearly a year now. Married? Hedda, forgive me. I'm... I... Married? Sinner. Married? I thought the letter had reached you ages ago, that you'd simply forgotten me. Oh, I know what this does to you, how you must be feeling. Do you, Margaret? I'm not sure that I do. If you can only find it in your heart to forgive me. For what? For the beginning of it, I can only blame myself. In the end, I... I think without your knowing it, you may have done a very great thing for me. But the way you must feel at this moment, Hedda... An overwhelming surprise, shock, I suppose. But at the same time, strength. A strength I've never known before. Something else, too. Something something very odd. Please try not to hate me. Margaret, I think it's never best to open up the past too far or too deeply. When a thing is gone, it's gone. Let's leave it at this, Margaret. Let me wish you the greatest happiness possible now and always. Bless you. Goodbye. Laura. Laura? Heather. I came back, Laura. Yes. I should never have left. Is she... She's not with you? No. Look, Heather. Look what I've done to the garden. And all in such a short time, really. Aren't you proud of me? I'm very proud of you. Except for the lilacs, of course. I, I couldn't do much with them. I think it's because the climate here isn't right for them. Have you been happy, Laura? Happy? No. I've had peace. I've been content in a way. But not happy. What was it, Heather? Why didn't you stay? She's married. That letter was written two years ago. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't be. I'm not. I had to go back. I'd never have known if I hadn't. I saw her and she told me. And it didn't matter at all. I had to leave quickly, tell her goodbye and leave, because she'd expect it to matter, and, and it didn't. I didn't know why it didn't. And then you came back. <laughs> Laura, there, there's no fool like an English fool. You weren't a fool. You did what you had to do. I should have known back there along the river. Not before. Neither of us could have known before. We weren't even the same people then that we are now, but certainly somewhere along the river. Known what, Heather? That I love you. Not her, but you. That in following her, I was following only a burned-out memory whose fire, if it had ever been, had long been since used up its fuel and turned cold. It was you, Laura. You were the real dream. Heather. The things I found, strength and hope, came from you, Laura. Sinner, I called her, talked of being faithful to a dream and... All the time, Sinera was you. Sinera. I like that. I love you, Hedda. I guess you knew that. No, my dear, I only hoped. And prayed a little, too, in my fashion.
And now, once again, here is our star, Mr. Joseph Cotton. United States Armed Forces Radio Service.